Yeah, for those who are too. Yeah. Oh. oh, sorry. <laughs> 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 that works too. It that ended works. up in the bowl. Exactly. Hi, I'm Guillermo, senior video producer for Chao. Superfood grain bowls are the new power lunch. Today I'm in Harlem visiting chef Pierre Cham at his restaurant Taranga, where he's gonna teach me how to make one of his bowls using ancient grains. These are dishes thought out to not only improve the quality of life of the consumer, but also the producer. Tell me what we're gonna be making today. Today we'll make what we call here Taranga Yasa Yasa bowl. It's inspired by a dish from South Senegal, Casamance, where my family originates from. Yasa is really a very simple dish. It's onions that have been cooked slowly with lime juice, a little bit of scotch bonnet, bay leaf and garlic. That whole combination is served over rice with grilled chicken or grilled fish. So here at Teranga, to make a New York bowl, we use red rice from Liberia because traditionally in Senegal, unfortunately, some of the crops are disappearing because we don't use them. The biodiversity is being very much in trouble now. I had to go all the way to Liberia, collaborate with farmers from Liberia, Mali, different parts of West Africa, and I got this amazing red rice to just take us back to the traditional dish. And we also use a black eyed pea salad. Oh, great. And also, key ingredient in West Africa black eyed peas. The salad will have cucumbers, red peppers, red onions, tomatoes, lots of parsley. And it comes also with plantain. We fry plantain. That's the thing that you see in many parts of West Africa. In Senegal, it was brought by the Ivorian community. Pierre, tell me a little bit about your background with food. Mm. Were you always interested in food? How did you end up becoming a chef? When you were born and raised in Senegal, it's like food is all around you. Your mother, your aunt, there's always a woman in charge of the cooking. I was not always interested in food in a sense that I would never think of cooking as a career. Coming from this culture, Senegal, food is a gender-based activity. Long story, but I got robbed three days after I arrived in New York. No way. So I needed a job immediately. A roommate was working at a restaurant and he said, why don't you come and take this busboy job? It was a busboy position often and I took it and you know, that changed everything for me. Cross cultural shock for me, I'm in the kitchen. I enter the kitchen with my dirty plates and I see only men in the kitchen. So I'm like, wow, what's going on here? But I'm in New York City, it's the food capital of the world and there's not really African food being represented, especially West African, and I know the flavors are fantastic, you know. And it became a mission for me to like introduce this, this cuisine. You know? and, and as I was doing it, I realized that Hey, and that's, this cuisine existed because in the southern food, you know, you see these flavors and some of the ingredients, some of the dishes are pretty much the same that we have. Right. You know, gumbo is our super kanja, jambalaya is our jollof of rice, and hopping joint is our chebu nyebe, and so and so, so forth. So that's really gradually how I, I was collecting. Most of the recipes were really from memories or collecting it from talking to my mother on the phone and writing it down. And I was going to ask you about that. So how did that change your relationship with the women uh, in your family or your mom? Completely. That got us, that we became much closer, much, much closer. So what do we need to do to make that salad? We cook these, the beans, the black eyed peas, and then we let it cool. It's right here. It's, we cooked it yesterday. Is it OK to use canned ones? If I don't have so, the time to yeah, cook it? Yeah, if you don't have time to cook it, it's okay to use canned one. Make sure you rinse it, you know, carefully in cold water. And then we're going to chop the onions, dice them, have them here. Same thing for the peppers. Same thing for the cucumber that we're going to cut in half, take the seeds out, and then dice it as well. Okay. And just uh, cut the tomatoes in in, in rice as well, in quarters and stuff with the seeds and everything, and combine it all together with the black eyed peas. So for the dressing, we have ginger. Same for the garlic. We add lime juice to it and salt. And then you just stir it first before the oil because you want to make sure the salt dissolves inside and then you add your oil gradually. Add the dressing. And add lots of parsley that will just send into the salad. 
right before serving to keep so it doesn't get soggy and it stuff. Doesn't get soggy. The acidity of the lime doesn't burn the. Gr oh yeah, because it'll start browning. Yeah. Exactly. What do we need to do with the rice? So the rice is just to rinse it. I mm -hmm. already did you, and then you cook it in for one cup of rice, two cups of water. What's special about this rice? Well, this is an heirloom rice from like that goes thousands of years back. Like two big families of rice in in the world: the Asian rice and the African rice. And the African rice, uh, the Gladirima, and the Asian rice, the Sativa. When you trace it back, they originate 2,500 years ago, around the same time. How did it first ah. arrive? So it's very it's mysterious at that level. And our philosophy here at Teranga is to just bring back those, those crops that's been traditional to our culture, our food culture. Before they disappear completely. Before they disappear completely. So that's our contribution to bringing the biodiversity of the, of the environment. But in addition, so, so these crops are very nutritious too. And not only nutritious for, for our health here in New York, but we also contribute in increasing the income for farmers in West Africa. Yes. Huh? Onions. So when the oil is at the right temperature, you add the onions all at once, right? You want to hear that searing sound so you know the temperature is right. But you have to resist from stirring it at that moment. People oftentimes think that they have to stir As it. soon as they drop it as in. As soon as they drop it. Now this time you just let it. Otherwise when you stir it, you release the water and you don't, you know, you won't have that brown, nice you brown You start like color. sweating your onions too early. Yeah, exactly. So you let it sit and you cover it and you let it sit for a minute until it actually starts smelling the onions cooking. Onions. Add bay leaves for seasoning, and uh, some of us like to add a scotch bonnet. You add it towards the end. You just want the essence of the scotch bonnet. You don't want the heat. Lime juice to deglaze it. This is the magic that happens after slow cooking yes, it. And... Exactly. In in here, in, we make the sauce separately, so there's no no meat in it and vegans can use it with Oh, right. Completely. The yeah, sauce yeah. is completely vegan uh, up until the moment that you decide to add any That's protein to it. Yeah, yeah. What do you do with this one? We just beat it. So, <laughs> Maduros. That's what they call it. Maduros. Mm -hmm. Yes. It's something between chemistry and magic almost yeah, to me. Yeah, like yes, I keep absolutely. calling it alchemy because that to it's, me is the... alchemy because you transform it, you know. Right? So that's, uh, that's about it. And I have my chicken that's been grilled and it's ready to be added to this whole thing. Oh, we have to add the parsley to the black eyed salad. Mm -hmm. yeah. And if you're brave, <laughs> you can <laughs> do this. <laughs> That's for the braves. And that's it. Oh, for the camera, because it looks great too. My new favorite sauce. <laughs> right? Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's a, it's a classic thing. Again, simple sauce with... Um, um, if you don't have a problem with onions, that's a perfect sauce. Yeah. And then for a refreshing pause... Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. That parsley, yum, you know, a little, a little taste of sweet here. Mm -hmm. It just tastes better than white rice. Oh, totally. Mm -hmm. yeah. Oh yeah, no comparison. Tastes better and better for you too. In a way, food is an anthropological study. Totally. It's beautiful and that's why food also has this power to unite people. In Senegal, we, we believe deeply that the, the the stranger, the foreigner, the guest, expected or not expected, everyone is a guest, and that guest brings blessings to you. So you receive the blessing by sharing what the best of what you have. You know, usually, it's the food. You know, so when you come to a household, even when you're not expected, people will invite you to come and sit and share. And they sit around the board and they say, "Come and eat with us." The more you give, the more you receive. So you don't. Get and not closing your doors to strangers. Exactly. I mean, I think that's a beautiful philosophy that would be amazing if that was applied to our world right now. Totally. 
it seems foolish even. It's like, wow, well, we're refusing so much blessings. We're closing <laughs> out. We're building walls. I mean, it's like, no, we don't want blessings. I mean, it's like just ridiculous. <laughs>